to do. We are reading, excuse me, Romeo and Julio, chapters 27 through 29. Chapter 27, Julio and his mother. Julio looked out of his window to a cold, bleak rain. It had rained all day, but he didn't care. The sun was shining in his heart, in his room, in his world. The day was bright with thoughts of Romeo. Her smile, her giggles, her laughter. Thinking of her made him feel like a crayon, full of color and possibilities, a speck of color in a world of drab gray and dark rain. Julio's mother peeked her head through his open door. Julio smiled. His mother had long black hair that showed no gray and a face that was beautiful, but somehow very sad. She rarely spoke to Julio of the three children she had buried before he was born, but he knew that she carried them with her, even in this cold and lonely place so far away from their small resting places. Julio always had been able to talk to her with ease. It was his mother he first told about the gang problem at his old school, about his anger and pain of moving, and also about his fight and friendship with Ben. Perhaps she would understand about Romy. Come in, Mama, he offered quietly. How's it going, little one, on this rainy, cold day, she asked him. I didn't even notice the rain, Mama, Julio admitted. It's a rainbow day to me. What's her name, his mom asked immediately. What makes you think it's a girl, Julio teased. It could be the fact that I made jazz band. Jazz band doesn't bring sunshine on a rainy day, my son, only a special someone. She is special, and her name is Romiette, Mama, Julio admitted with a smile. Maria Montague looked into her son's eyes. You want to talk about it? I don't even know how it happened so quickly. All I know is I met her at school and I can't stop thinking about her. And her feelings about you? Why should she care about somebody like me? She hardly even knows me. All I know is that I can't stand to be away from her. Her curiosity, her sense of adventure, they all make me want to dance or jump or yell with excitement. She sounds quite special, someone worth treating with great care. Oh yeah, she's all that, all right. Julio was surprised at the amount of understanding his mother showed. What does she look like? Asked Maria Montague. Tell me about her. She's a jewel in a pile of rocks. She's like chocolate cake for dinner, and I love chocolate. My goodness, she's got you talking poetry. Oh yes, Mama. The shape of her fingers, the curve of her back, the tilt of her head, all make me dizzy. I even like the sound of her voice, a little low and full of secrets. If she could put that voice of hers in a bottle and sell it, she'd be rich. Well, it seems that she has one satisfied customer, at least. I'm glad you found someone special, Julio. Take your time. Cultivate your friendship first. The romance will happen soon enough. I'm working on the friendship part, Mama. She's the girl I'm getting the puppy from. I'm so glad you said we could have one. I'm going to her house Sunday to get it. I wonder if her parents will be there and what they'll think of me. Maybe they won't like me. Of course they'll like you. What's not to like? But you're my mother. You have to, to like me, Julio grinned. And sometimes that's not easy, she smiled back. Go to her house, be yourself, and don't worry so much. If you see something golden in this girl, then her parents must have done a pretty good job of raising her, so they must be pretty special as well. You're sort of smart, Mama. I remember the feeling of young love. You feel as if you have found your dream, and you can't stop smiling. Cleo smiled. You got that right. <clears throat> Chapter 28, Conversation, Ben and Julio. Julio stood in the main hall of the school, waiting for the bell to ring to start the day. It seemed like years since that first day when he had rearranged Ben's face and found a friend. The halls were still as dark, the building just as ugly, but many students who had been strangers were now acquaintances, whose names he remembered and some had become friends. What's up, Julio? Or hey, Julio, greeted him as he found a place to toss his book bag and wait for the rush to get the first bell. Romy wasn't there yet, but Ben's arrival was always a surprise. Today, his hair was parted in the middle. One half glowed bright pink. The other half shimmered in iridescent silver. Kids cheered in approval as Ben took his bows. Julio shook his head and grinned. What's up, Julio? My main drop of tequila in this concrete seashore we call home. You're home, man, retorted Julio. I'm just living here till I can get back to mandolins and mariachi music. Hey, I don't see you buying no plane ticket. Looks like you're spending lots of time with Rome yet. She seems to be making you your so she seems to be making your sojourn here rather pleasant. Yeah, man, she's hot sauce for my mashed potatoes, chocolate for your cornflakes. Pretty poetic for a dude with two-toned hair. Pink and silver hair is what it poetry is all about. Expression, creativity. Besides, orange is old. That was yesterday. Gotta stay fresh, my man. Gotta stay alive. Don't want those devil dogs to keep hassling me and Romy. They have no poetry. They have no individuality. They're just parts of a large, dirty organism. Like that alien monster that thing in that Star Trek movie. Unthinking, but very, very dangerous. So how do you fight stuff that makes no sense? You gotta be smarter than they are, Julio, and quicker. Ben did a quick little dance step. Easier said than done, Ben, my friend. There's been a lot in the news lately about gangs and schools. They don't have solutions either. 
Hey Julio, did you see Channel 6 last night? Asked Ben as the bell rang. Yeah, did you see Nanette? Now that's an example of no brains. Whew. You got that right. For about 10 minutes yesterday, she was looking into the wrong camera. I guess at the commercial break, they told her what to do. You know what, Ben? I watch Romeo's dad every night to see how that show is put together. I'd give anything to work at a TV station. And you get Nanette Norris as an extra treat. Don't remind me. Why do you think they keep her on the air? Who knows? So why don't you ask Romeo's dad for a job? A job? I've never even met him. I'd be scared to death just to be in the same room with him. So let Romeo ask him. No, maybe by summer I'll get enough nerve, or I'll go down and apply for a summer intern job on my own. I don't believe in people asking for favors. There's the warning bell. I think I'll go to class on time today and give the teacher a heart attack. Ben jogged down the hall and around the corner. Later, Julio, he called out. Julio grinned and went to his own class. Chapter 29, hall conversation just before lunch. Romeo was in a hurry. She hadn't seen Julio all day. She'd missed him earlier that morning in the front hall and hadn't run into him between classes the way she usually did. Teachers talked extra long or someone asked her a question and her timing had been off all day. Just as she got to the lunchroom steps, Malika stopped her. Can I speak to you, Romeo? Looks like you're already doing that, said Romy. Romy replied with a glance. What you been up to, girl? I don't see you much at lunch anymore, Malika challenged. I usually eat with Julio, Malika. I guess the whole school knows by now. Romy wanted to rush by Malika and up the steps, but she knew it was better to act unconcerned. Malika knew she was interfering with Romy's plans. She spoke slowly and with purpose. You got that right. You know, you got the devil dogs on edge. Why should they care who I eat with? It's a pride thing, a turf thing. You know how it is. No, I guess I don't. I'm minding my own business, eating my own lunch, and talking to my friend. Why should they care? And you sound like you're on their side. Romy was getting impatient. I'm not on nobody's side. I just figured I'd warn you that they don't like what you're doing. They wouldn't like it if you were eating with a white boy either. That's just the way they see things. How do you know so much? How, how do you know so much how they see things? You still talking to Terrell? Yeah, me and Mr. T, that's his gang name, we're pretty tight. You know how that is. I really shouldn't even be talking to you, but since we're friends, or used to be, I figured I'd let you know they're watching you. You still didn't tell me what they planned to do. I don't really know. I just know that you better stay away from places where you might be caught alone, like bathrooms and stuff. Romy was incredulous. She gaped, she gasped in surprise. I can't believe this. Are you for real? Malika was unruffled. Real as a heart attack. What about Julio? What about him? Is he in any danger? If he don't learn the rules, he might have to be taught a lesson. What rules? Who made up these rules? How can he follow laws when he doesn't know what they are? The devil dogs don't want to hurt you because you're one of the sisters on the list. You always dressed like a sister and hung with the sisters, so there was no problem. But now you're about to get cut off the list, and that's dangerous. The list? You're talking crazy. Romy was angry, irritated, and very late for lunch now. I'm trying to get some basic stuff into your black head, and never forget it, it is black, Malika reminded Romy. If you get cut off the list, you got no protection. I never ask for any protection from some gang. I don't want it or need it. Romy was so angry she wanted to cry, but she refused to give Malika the satisfaction. Suit yourself. That Mexican ain't got a chance. What did he ever do to you or to anybody black? Romy asked in disbelief. Nothing. We just don't need no foreigners around here mixing it up with the sisters. He's not foreign. He was born in this country just like you were. Doesn't matter. We don't want him here. You're treating him just like whites treated us. Don't you think that's a little stupid? Romy asked, trying to appeal to Malika's sense of reason. I don't make the rules. I just pass on the information. Gang rules, gang laws, things change. You sure have changed, Malika, Romy said angrily. You used to think for yourself. Now I got Mr. T to think for me and take care of me. I like that better. You really like Terrell? Yeah, he's got it together. He makes me feel strong and safe. Look, can't you see? That's how Julio makes me feel. You should have picked somebody black. I didn't pick him. It just happened. You don't pick who you fall for. You just fall. And when you pick yourself up, he's part of your life. Can't you understand that? Look, I've already said too much. Be careful. Something is going to go down and soon. The devil dogs have to make a statement, make a showing to the school. There are, there's too many white kids for them to try anything, but your Mexican is the perfect target. It's nothing personal. Peace. Bye. At that, Malika disappeared into the lunchtime crowd. Romy stood there a minute, musing on what Malika had told her. Peace, she said out loud. Nothing personal. What are we going to do? She ran up the stairs to find Julio.